hope so. Okay, thanks for, let's see if it works. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. A lot of text, don't read it, it was most of my own. That's no, okay, go ahead. Um, now, what I'm going to talk to you about today is, is our uh, work with the sensor observation services and then the implementation and the use, and I will also mention some uh, use cases where we've been using it and are using it. Um, but basically, it's, it's all about making sure that, um, that the open standards are being used, um, that they are possible to use, that the industry is supporting the, the standards because without it's, it's fine to having, uh, having standards being developed and uh, being discussed, um, but if we want to use them, then we rely on industry to, to, to support it. And that both uh, counts for the open source environment, but also for the license-based uh, environment. Um, and that's why this, this, for this, as also Anna, he mentioned before, we've been working with S3, we also work with 52 North, and but also partly OGC since they are uh, the main player on, on, the, on the open standards. Um, the sensor observation service is all about making access to data through services. Over the years, we've been used to sharing data f uh, by use of uh, files, data exchange over FTP, um, and HTTP, but, but having the, the, the service approach, um, you, get way, you get way more uh, possibilities in being able to query and get access to the exact kind of data that you need. Anna just showed uh, how you can query the SOS um, uh, services, and um, that's why we believe at the agency that this is uh, the way forward in being able to access environmental information. This whole project started back in uh, 2010. Um, we've had been following the SOS uh, development in the, in the sensor web, sensor web enablement uh, community for a few years. And um, since our net, our platform is, is mainly based on uh, an, an, an uh, and Aki server, then we would like to have something that uh, could support that platform from a, a SOS point of view. So the, the, we initiated the idea in 2010, and um, 2010, 2011, uh, we defined a lightweight profile of the SOS because we felt that the SOS standard was too heavy for us to use. Our main use was uh, from in situ point of view where we had uh, air quality stations, we had water quality stations, and uh, so it was more or less all point based. So that was one of the, uh, the ideas we had to, so a lightweight profile would, would mainly support uh, point data. This was also to, to allow the industry to, uh, to, it would to make it easier for the industry to, to implement the standard. Because that's, I think that's what we see when, when uh, new standards are coming and industry have to, to start implementing it. Um, we see that the, 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 the standards are implemented in slightly different ways and then you end up having uh, standards which are not really compliant, you cannot really use it um, across the different uh, uh, systems. So after uh, this uh, light profile was defined, uh, 52 North started to develop it, uh, implementing this uh, extension um, funded by ESRI, and then uh, end 2011 we had the first uh, version ready. And now uh, the SOS is more or less uh, ready to be deployed or be used. Um, We've been waiting for the Archis 10.1 to be released, and uh, so that's why the, the source extension is now on the, uh, more or less ready to be uh, downloaded. And as you see, it's, 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 uh, even though it's, it's running on a license-based platform, it is an open source project. Uh, I think that's also been important for us because we cannot, as an agency, we cannot pledge users to use um, uh, license-based software. We have to make sure that when we, when we go into a project like this that, that, uh, that software is, is uh, in principle open for everyone. This is a little bit uh, what also Arne, he mentioned, um, that the sensor observation extension service or the sensor uh, observation service extension is an extension to the ArcGIS server. So I'm not going to delve too much into this slide. 
Um, all the last weeks we have been uh, using this uh, extension and we have, it's quite simple to, to install the, the extension on, a, on, the, on the ArcGIS server. It's, uh, it's uh, just an upload and install and then it is it's running. And after that you have to set up your map services as normal and uh, on the capabilities you simply just check off that this service should be uh, using the source extension. Of course, the data model behind the database that is accessing, being accessed, have to fulfill uh, the data model. Um, this, is the, this is how the data model looks like. I don't want to go into details. That would be too much. Um, but this is, this is the model we, we are pushing data into it. It might be that we need some extensions around this to fulfill our, our goals. Uh, it might be we have some additional metadata around it or information that we need to store, but that's quite simple because we'll just, just add some additional uh, entities or tables uh, where this can, can be rated. But that we, but of course, we cannot touch the core model of the, of the, um, of the database without having also to slightly adjust the t extension. So this is the first case study. Um, it's an air quality, it's called uh, air quality, uh, the e-reporting. Um, so in 2012, we have a pilot project running uh, with the commission and uh, I believe eight or 10 uh, countries which have volunteered to implement this e-reporting uh, schema uh, the, um, system which is, uh, consists of a number of different uh, XML schemas. Um, our main or my main um, focus is on the up-to-date data or what we used to call near real-time data. It's air quality data coming in uh, hourly from the member states. Um, and we then receive these data through uh, XML schema based on the O&M 2.0. And we then, to get the data into the, into the database, we have, uh, we, we have developed a number of uh, Python scripts, which um, um, yeah, basically pass the XML data and, and start pushing the data into the data model using uh, the REST API. The whole point here is that we want to make the data available uh, through the source as, at the endpoint, as an endpoint, and, uh, and by that we are using the, this uh, extension uh, for Aki Server 10.1. Because some of these data are coming in every hour, uh, it's what we call, we normally refer to as raw data. So it might be there's some uh, restrictions on the use of this data. So on top of that, we are able to, to, to uh, set up some access control by server software. So it is not necessarily uh, directly public access to this data. But in principle, that's just, just a matter of uh, politics, I guess. So in this scenario, we have, um, it might be that we ha we have uh, we have we of course we have the sensor observation service set up in Copenhagen where the agency is located. Then we have some countries they have their own SOS server and we co we we communicate uh, machine to machine with these servers. It might also be that some countries they don't have that SOS server set up, so so they will have their own scripts extracting the data from their uh, um, uh, own systems. Um, and then just passing on the files to us, and we will then, uh, you, by use of our scripts, we will push the data into the to the database. So it's it's really up to the to the countries to decide how they want to connect to this network. Of course, you get most functionality and flexibility by using the SOS servers because then we can easily query exactly the data we are needing. Let's say we have a breakdown of uh, our system, that happens. Uh, with systems. So we said we had a breakdown yesterday. We just ask that country's uh, SOS server give me the last 24 hours of the data or the data we uh, during Saturday night where we had a crash. So that gives us a lot of flex flexibility in making sure that data are being uh, transferred and shared. This is the conceptual model of, uh, of the of the e-reporting uh, schemas. I don't want to go into the details, but it just shows that, yeah, 
to get data into a data model, you have to understand how, the, how things uh, are set up. And it actually took us uh, a bit of a while to understand how the different uh, terms were, uh, um, were to be under understood. This one, uh, Anne already showed. It's just a picture, a screenshot of, of how the source extension looks um, in, the, in the installation. And it's, uh, even though it's, this is a, this is a extension used for what I normally refer to as machine to machine and, uh, um, sharing of data. This is not, this is not necessarily for, for humans to read and to use, but um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's a good interface to share and to and see if, uh, if data is actually available. Um, you, you also mentioned this client access to data. This is a, a client to which 50 nodes is providing and is giving access to uh, SOS uh, servers around um, the world. Uh, this one is also accessing air quality data and shows a time uh, series of access of data. And since by using the SOS, this kind of tools can be used by anyone. Uh, this is just one client. I, I'm sure there's also other clients out there or other clients coming. Um, but since we're using the same standards in, in giving access to the data, well, you, you don't have to worry about um, different formats and, uh, and standards. Doing, using the same standards gives a way more uh, possible use. Another case study. It's a small private project we had on uh, noise data um, where the city of Dublin uh, offered uh, noise data um, and we also, they also deliver the data uh, using an O&M uh, schema. Uh, they don't have their own SOS server set up so they have this scenario where they, they have a script running and they extract the data from the database and provide the data as O&M. Uh, and we then take that XML, uh, which we receive on a daily basis, and push it into our database. And the data is then available uh, through, uh, through our source uh, endpoint. Um, yeah. And this is just, this is just, we just made the, the data available in, in our Iron Earth platform um, as a map service. Uh, where, we, where we just took this, because it's five minutes average data, we just um, aggregated it into um, into uh, a daily average. This is also something. It's, it's, this is the aggregation of the five minutes data into a daily average. That could also be happening uh, based on a SOS uh, uh, in the SOS way, which we didn't do here. But it could could be that we have um, uh, what, uh, what what we normally refer to as a cascading SOS, where you have SOS on one level but then you aggregate it into another label which is still accessible uh, as a source node. Okay, to, to summarize, I think it's important to, to make Inspire happen that we, that we, that we make sure that uh, the standards we're using are open and that the, the standards are being, uh, um, are being developed and supported by industry so that the countries and the other users uh, have fully access and access uh, and share, can share data. Um, so I also think so it's important to we, we keep on promoting the open standards, whether it's SOS or WMS or WFS uh, or, or new ones coming like the, the REST API. Um, it's also about, well, and it's for instance, uh, uh, WMS was, was very, is, is very useful and it was a few years ago that was the only possible way to, to really share uh, through open standards because that was the mostly uh, used uh, standards which every, more or less everyone was uh, using. But I also have to say that uh, I can see that now that WMS it's, uh, it's also, we, we, it's, it's, difficult, it's, it's difficult to get more out of it I think because you, it's, it's, it's just uh, images being sent to, from one server to the client and to, to get access to the to real data behind it, you probably need a bit more and this is where WFS comes in or, or, the, or the REST API. So, yeah, I think this, this was it. Any questions? Well, thank you very much.